So good. But anyways, what is up, guys? Man, I'm so glad uh, that you are here with us, whether you're here in person, watching online, or maybe you're at our Grayson campus. Come on, can we give it up for our Grayson campus? Come on now. Yes, man, we love you all. Tate and Burton doing an amazing job. And man, I'm just super excited just for tonight, one, uh, because the Bengals won, you know what I'm saying? I mean, name it, claim it, the Bengals won, and it was amazing. They won last week, then they came back. They won this week, too, and they're going to win next week as well. Just going to name it, claim it. It's going to be amazing, and uh, we're actually going to be trying to have a little playoff party here next Sunday night. So uh, be looking out at our social media for that, at Better Life Youth. Uh, make sure you follow us, and we'll update you on that. But we're going to have a lot of fun, but we're also going to have a lot of fun here tonight just as we continue in our series of Better You. During this series, we've talked about you don't just want a new year and a new you, but you want a better you. A better you. We really want this year to be the best year yet. And honestly, it doesn't really matter if you're new, if you're not better. See, a lot of times we try to change the, the outside of us just something new, whether it's new shoes, new clothes, and hear me out, I love me some new shoes and new clothes, and uh, if you ever wanna get me a gift, you know what I'm saying, like, I, I love them, but in all seriousness, we love to change the outside of us, whether it's our hair color or our haircut or whatever it looks like, but the reality is we must change from the inside out. Not just a new you, but a better you. See, because a better you is truly becoming more like Jesus. And by becoming more like Jesus, you lose yourself. You become more like him. And that is a new you. But not just a new you, but a better you. So we've really been diving into that. And then last week was absolutely amazing. I heard from so many groups that it was just so, so good just talking about some of the things that we struggle with surrendering and laying down. And man, it was just so good. And then tonight, we're gonna be continuing on in this series of Better You. We're gonna go ahead and jump into Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, starting in verse 22. It says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life. To put off, say put off. One more time, say put off. There we go. To put off your old self, say old self. That's right, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Now say deceitful desires. So to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. And to put on the new self, say new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Then verse 25, it says, therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body and your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. I'm gonna say that one more time. <laughs> Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Man, that's so, so hard. But then it goes on and says, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Verse 30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one, other, one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, as in Christ, God forgave you. I know that that's a lot there in, one little passage, but man, I believe that the Lord is really wanting to speak to us that if you want to be a better you, you also must be a new you. 
And I know I talked about it even from the beginning that it's not just a new year, new you, and it's not just a new you, but it's a better you, but while becoming a better you, you must have a new you. See, I talked about clothes before. I like clothes, but let's be real. How many of y'all have like that favorite t-shirt? It's like, man, I'm not getting rid of that t-shirt. It may have holes in it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that is my t-shirt, right? Man, I have those too, and it's like, I I love getting new clothes, but the reality is, man, I still have those old clothes that I just can't get rid of. I know people who still even have things from their childhood, like a blanket or something that is only like the like this big now, and it used to be really, really big, but uh, the reality is, it, man, that, that's from my childhood, and man, I love it. We all have those things that we just can't let go of. But the reality is this. Be a better you, you must put off your old self. Be a better you, you must put off your old self. And like I said, it's a lot like those clothes. And we leave them on. But I want us to look at my first point here tonight, which is this, is that your desires will deceive you. Your desires will deceive you. See, we saw in verse 22 there where it says to Put off your old self. Why? It's being corrupted by its deceitful desires. See, here's the thing. We all have desires, and in the moment, we don't go, oh, my desires are bad. No one goes into a relationship going, man, I hope this is toxic. Man, I hope that I'm making the wrong choice. We don't do the things in our life going, man, I hope this leads me down the wrong path. Man, I hope that I start watching this or drinking this or trying this. I hope that I start doing these things whenever I hang out with this friend group. Man, I hope it turns me into an awful person. See, we never see our desires as bad, but our desires will deceive us. See, a lot of times we may see that guy or girl and be like, oh man, they're the one. You know, it's like, they are the one. It's like, man, whatever it takes to be with them. Or maybe that friend group, man, whatever it takes to be seen. Man, I feel so alone. I don't wanna be alone anymore. Whatever it takes to be seen, man, I, I just want to fit in. And it's like, man, my desire, man, it will deceive you. And you will go down a path that you never meant to go down just to reach your desires. But it will deceive you. They will deceive you. See, Jeremiah 17, 9 says that your heart is deceitful above all things. I just feel like it's good. I feel like it's okay. They're not that bad of a person. Like, no, they don't go to church, man. They don't love Jesus, but man, they they don't cuss. Yeah, they, they, they don't really want to go to youth. They don't really care about youth. They don't really care about church. Yeah, they, they, they just, they're tired. They just don't want to. Man, they're cute. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it happens so often. It happens so much that we are willing to set aside the plan that God has for us, the better us that God has for us, for our own desires. And then my second point is this is that your mind matters. Your mind matters. See, a lot of times we're so used to with social media and everything that we just pull out our phone and we'll just scroll. We have a snap streak with those people and we're constantly talking to those people. It's like it doesn't have weight. But your mind matters. What you put in you will come out of you. Your mind matters. See, verse 23, it says to be 
made new in the attitude with your mind. How is the attitude in your mind? Like, honestly, have you even thought about that? The attitude of your mind, what you are holding on to, are you stressed all the time? Are you dealing with anger? Are you dealing with unrighteousness? See, what you believe matters. What you put in you will come out of you. And if you believe a certain way, you feel a certain way, you act a certain way. What you believe matters, your mind matters. So what are you believing tonight? What do you believe about yourself? What's the attitude of your mind? See, I really, really believe that there's some of us who come in and we just feel defeated. Whether it's in our home life because maybe your parents are arguing or maybe they got a divorce and you just feel defeated, like nothing's gonna help. You feel defeated because you continue to come to youth, continue to come to youth, continue to come to youth. But yet you still feel alone. You feel defeated because it's like, man, I try to share about Jesus. Man, I I try to invite people, man, and, and no one wants to come and I just feel defeated. What are you believing? What do you believe about yourself? See, because what you believe dictate how you feel and how you live. Your mind matters. And hear me out, a lot of times we go, man, I wish I could just empty my thoughts. Have you ever thought, man, I wish I could just get rid of all my thoughts? I don't know about you, but that's me. Like, oh man, my mind is cluttered. Man, I'm dealing with this anxiety, this stress. Man, I wish that I could just have a moment of peace where there was nothing in my mind and we try to empty out all of our thoughts and it's like, man, I can't do it, I can't do it. But I want to let you know that even that's not the answer because an empty mind is the enemy's playground. But you must fill it with the word of God. You must fill it with truth. And that will lead to a better you. How is your mind? What are you filling your mind with? Are you in God's word every day? Have you had a conversation with him lately? Have you took the feelings of loneliness and stress and anxiety? Have you taken it to him? Have you taken this feeling of defeat to him? Because guess what? The battle is already won. Your mind matters. What you believe matters. And what you believe can lead to a better you, but are you believing the truth or are you believing a lie? Your desires, they will deceive you. And your mind matters. My last point, just as we come to a close, is is this, is a new you puts off old ways. A new you puts off old ways. And see, I asked at the very beginning of the series whether you're here for the first time in this series or you've been coming every single week. But I talked about it even how reality is, man, we want a new us. A lot of times it's like, new year, new me. New year, new me. Yet the patterns are the same. But I think that we all want like a new us. We want a a, a new us. Yet we're still living in our old ways. See, I talked about it before with the clothes. I love new clothes. I may buy a Bengals jersey after tonight if my wife doesn't kill me. I'm not. (laughs) I'm not. She's giving me a death glare. I can feel it. I don't even know where she's at, but I can feel it. Like, uh uh-uh, you ain't buying something new. But we love new things. So why do we 
hang on to the old things so much? Why do we hold on to the old things so much? Why do we want to hold on to it? Why do we continue to wear the same old clothes whenever you have something new? It's because it's comfortable. See, and a lot of times what happens in our lives is we continue to live in these same patterns and in our old ways. Why? Simply because it is comfortable. But God didn't call us to be comfortable because if he did, he would have never called himself the comforter. So guess what? It's gonna be uncomfortable. Man, I know whenever I get new shoes or new boots, man, I get blisters on my feet and it's uncomfortable, but man, they look good. You know what I'm saying? It's worth it. But for real, it is worth it. To be uncomfortable, to do what God has already called you to do. He is our comforter. And guess what? He will be right there with you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you. But will you go to him? Or are you gonna come in here and say, yeah, I know that, I need to do this, man. I'm really struggling with this. I know I need to surrender this. But as soon as you walk out the doors, you continue to live in your old ways. That in here, you're one way. But out there and at school, you're the other way. And people don't see a difference in you because you can change the outside. But if you don't change the inside, people will begin to notice. You know the saying, fake it till you make it? Well, I think that we faked it so much because we got so comfortable with it. But a new you puts off old ways. A better you puts off old ways. So I'm gonna ask you, if you will, close your eyes and bow your heads. I just want us to take a couple moments. Just be honest with yourself. How are you living? How's your relationship with Jesus? When's the last time you opened up God's word? When's the last time you went to him in prayer, not just asking for something? When's the last time you had a conversation with them? When's the last time you've shared about him? When's the last time you told him you loved him? How's your relationship with Jesus? When's the last time you thanked him for sending his son to die on a cross? When's the last time you thanked God for that? How's your relationship with him? Are you growing in relationship with him? Are you filling your mind with truth? Are you still believing the lies? That you're not loved, that you're not cared about, and that you're alone? That life right now in middle school and high school is kind of meaningless. Are you still holding a grudge against someone? Do you still have anger built up inside? Are you bitter? Or like it says in verse 32, are you kind? Are you compassionate? Have you forgiven others? Like it says in that, Scripture, like Christ forgave you.
Are you putting on new clothes just to come to youth, a new you just to come to youth? Like going back home, going into school with your old ways, your old self, your old habits, and just staying comfortable because it's easy. with every head bowed and every eye closed. And I ask again, how's your relationship with Jesus? Maybe you've given your life to him. And thank you, God, for saving me. But are you living for him? Has your life gotten better because of Jesus? Are your eyes fixed on him? Are you allowing him to lead you, to guide you, and to direct you? Are you allowing him to renew your mind and make a new you? Are you allowing him to speak through his word the truth of what he says about you and who you are? Are you taking the lies from the enemy to him so he can replace the lies with the truth so you can be set free? And Christian, if that's you, and you're here tonight. And your answer is your relationship with them isn't great that you have kind of went back to living in your old ways and doing the same old things and just kind of living comfortably. I wanna encourage you to fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your focus on him. He will never lead you astray. And he won't just make a new you, but he will make a better you. But maybe you're here tonight and you never experienced the last part that we talked about as Christ forgave you. But tonight you're ready to accept his forgiveness. Live in freedom. Experience this new you to experience this better you. And if that's you and you're here tonight, you're ready to give your life to Jesus, I'm gonna ask you just to say this prayer with me and a prayer it won't save you. But your lips can proclaim what your heart declares and if tonight your heart declares Jesus is Lord, let's pray, God, I'm sorry. I've sinned, I've messed up, I've blown it. But Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe that you came for me. Jesus, I believe that you died for me. And Jesus, I believe that three days later, you rose up out of the grave, defeating death for me. I repent, I turn from my old ways. Jesus, I turn to you and I declare you as Lord of my life. Please forgive me. If that's you, I'm gonna ask you with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If that's you and you just gave your life to Jesus here tonight, on the count of three, would you just slip up your hand, not to embarrass you, but I just wanna pray for you. We have a free gift that we would love to give you. One, I'm so proud of you. Two, Jesus loves you so much. Three, if that was you, would you just slip up your hand? I want y'all to know that I'm so proud of you all. Whether it's night, you fix your eyes back on Jesus, your focus on him. Or tonight you gave your life to him. I'm so proud of you. And Jesus truly has a better life for you. God, we just come to you right now, we just thank you. We just thank you just for who you are. God, for all you've done. God, I just pray that 
you just continue to stir in our hearts, stir in our lives, help us become more like you. God, not just a new us, but a better us. God, lead us, guide us, direct us every step of the way. God, we love you. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.